Hey, it's Mike, your host of Craft Beer Storm. How are you doing today? It's Friday, and we have Craft Brew News, where we go through the news of the week, the drama that is craft beer, and we bring it to you. So we, we select some stories, and uh, and these are courtesy of brewbound.com. Uh, first story up is the U.S. Supreme Court strikes down Tennessee residency requirement. And six months after hearing oral arguments and a constitutional challenge to Tennessee's two-year residency requirement for obtaining a retail liquor license, United States Supreme Court yesterday struck down a controversial stipulation that had prevented out-of-state retailers from setting up shop in the volunteer state. So it's protectionism in the state of Tennessee. In that case, chain alcohol retailer Total Wine, along with Doug and Mary Ketchum, who bought a mom-and-pop liquor store in 2016 after moving to Memphis from Utah, challenged the two-year residency requirement, which they said amounted to economic protectionism. And the U.S. Supreme uh, United States uh, Court of Appeals in the 6th District sided with Total Wine and the Ketchums ruling that the residency requirement violated the Constitution and the 21st Amendment's Dormant Commerce Clause, which established to prevent states from engaging in economic protectionism. So in writing his majority opinion issued yesterday, Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito deemed Tennessee's two-year residency requirement for retail license applicants unconstitutional because it blatantly favors the state's residence and has little relationship to public health and safety. And then the high court added that the 10-year residency requirement for license renewals, which Tennessee has, and a provision blocking publicly traded corporations from operating in liquor stores in the state are so plainly biased <laughs> on unalloyed protectionism that neither the association nor the state is willing to come to their defense. So there you go. You have antiquated laws uh, Court of Appeals uh, cited that they are unconstitutional and the state Supreme Court, it got, went all the way to the state Supreme Court and they uh, affirmed it. So there you go, Tennessee. Um, which opens the doors to a lot of people from out of state. I mean, it's, it's kind of discrimination and protectionism. So, well, there you go with state laws. Uh, next story up, Deschutes begins selling canned water. And if you haven't done so already, check out episode number 42 on the Craft Beer Storm podcast. Deschutes brewmaster Brian Favor. We interviewed him. I, I caught up with him at the um, Craft Brewers Conference in uh, in Denver earlier this year. And great guy. They make an excellent beer. Lots of beer. Lots of beer. Uh, so in an effort to cut down on single-use plastic water bottles, Oregon's Deschutes Brewery has begun canning drinking water. According to the company's blog, uh, the Shoots is the 10th largest Brewers Association defined craft brewery. That's big. And it said its canned water uh, would be available to, uh, to purchase this summer at events throughout Central Oregon, as well as Tumalo Creek kayak and canoe locations in Bend, Sun River, and River Bend. So they're going to keep it in Oregon, but they're trying to, you know, get away from. Uh, single-use plastic water bottles. I use a lot of them. I crush them and I throw them out. You know, maybe the cans they can recycle. So that's good. I mean, I'm not favorable about cans. But in this case, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> I'm biased. I like bottles. I like 22-ounce bottles. They're awesome. But uh, we're trying to reverse the trend. So, okay. But anyway, putting water in bottles, I don't think it would be good in this case. Because you, you obviously, well, people say they throw cans in their backpacks and go hiking and stuff like that. It's all crap. <laughs> they throw bottles in there, uh, uh, plastic bottles. I know they do that because you, you want refreshment. When you go uh, hiking, you have to rehydrate. So why not put them in cans? So I think this use of cans is fine. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll go on to the next story here. Bell's Two-Hearted Ale, named top beer by the AHA. Uh, for the second, uh, for the third consecutive year, Bell's Brewery's Two Hearted Ale is the top-ranked beer according to the in the U.S. according to the American Home Brewers Association's 
AHA Zymer G um, magazine. Uh, the best uh, beers in America's list now in its 17th year is populated by a survey of AHA members. Uh, rounding out the top five in order were Russian Rivers Pliny the Elder, Sierra Nevada's Pale Ale, Founder Brewing's KBS, and Alchemist Hetty Topper. These are all excellent beers. Receiving this uh, honor once, twice, uh, even was incredible. But a third time, I am speechless and incredibly thankful to the home brewing community and everyone who has helped make this beer what it is today. Bell's founder, Larry Bell, said in a press release. And we got to get Larry on. Larry, if you're listening, we got to get you on. If someone knows him, connect us. Uh, additionally, the AHA members named Bell's the top brewery in the U.S., followed by Founders, Russian River, Sierra Nevada, Dogfish Head. So there you go. Bell's is on top again. And they're making excellent beer. Really great beer. They're winning a lot of awards, and it's good stuff. Uh, next, uh, last story here. Brew Dog loses the sex discrimination lawsuit. A lot of drama going on at Brew Dog. Um, Brew Dog's attempt to draw attention to it, to the gender wage gap ended with a man successfully suing the Scottish craft brewery for sexual discrimination, according to The Independent. That's a UK paper. Uh, Thomas Bauer filed a lawsuit against Brewdog after one of the brewery's bartenders refused to sell him a discounted punk IPA, which was rebranded as pink IPA, in March 2018, unless the man identified as a woman. So that's, yeah, okay, great. Uh, Bauer claimed that he felt forced into identifying as a woman so he could buy the discounted beer. So he sued the company claiming direct discrimination and a breach over the Equality Act of 2010, the outlet reported. And District Judge uh, Phillips agreed with Bauer, ruling that the man had been directly discriminated against by Brewdog due to his gender. The fact by identifying as a female, he was still able to purchase a pink IPA makes no difference, Phillips added. I accept what Dr. Bauer says, namely that the identifying uh, as a female was the only way he could purchase the pink IPA at a cost of $4, four pounds, excuse me. Uh, according to Vice, Power was awarded um 1254 in damages, which he pledged to donate to charity, minus court fees. So there you go. Um, I don't know. You want to do something and promote women, and then some guy comes in and why don't you sell it to me? I don't want to identify as a woman. And So there's all kinds of stuff going on there. You're trying to promote women, and then there's discrimination, so it's, it's all crazy stuff. But that's the drama of craft beer. So that is the craft brew news for today. It's Friday. I, I uh, If you like what we're doing, you like our podcast, please go on iTunes. Give us a rating. Give us a review. Um, we do these uh, craft brew news every Friday, bring you the uh, news of the week. On Mondays, we do uh, we, we interview a, a craft brewer, a uh, mover shaker in the industry. We're 360. Um, everybody in the industry, uh, craft beer. Canning, labeling, distributing, selling, brewing, everything. Bars, restaurants, we do it all. So if you want to get on, shoot me an email. Michael at craftbeerstorm.com and let's talk about it. And then on Wednesday, we do beer styles. So we go down the Great American Beer Festival list. There's 102 uh, different styles and there's subcategories in each one. So there's there's a lot more to uh, lagers and IPAs, guys. There's a lot a lot of different styles of beers. So we we take one a week and we go through the, uh, you know, what it's made of, the color, the the barley used, the hops, um, you know, what glass to serve it in, examples of the style, just to let you know that it's out there and that you should explore it. it might be your new favorite beer. And that's all we have for you today. I wish you the great uh, weekend. And we will talk to you on Monday. Take care.